what are the top 5 lessons that I've learned from Paul Tudor Jones that's going to help you increase your profits and change the way you trade. We're going to talk about that today coming up next. So if you don't know who Paul Tudor John is, he's one of the top hedge fund managers in the world. He's a very successful investor, a very successful trader that I look up to, that a lot of traders look up to. If you're looking for a god of trading and investing, he is just as close to that. For example, in the year of 1987, during the financial crisis, while other people die, he made a total of 62% that year. And not only that, he has achieved an ROI that many thought is impossible. Imagine if you make a three-digit return, a three-digit ROI for five consecutive years. So the first lesson that I've learned from him is my secret to being successful from a trading perspective is to have an unquenchable thirst for information and knowledge. A lot of people would think that all Tudor Jones must have some holy grail 100% win rate system. I've studied him, I've read about him, I've watched his interviews. He never ever said that the secret to my success from a trading perspective is because I have the best system in the world and you don't. He never ever said that. So here's the thing, a lot of traders come into trading, they just learn one or two strategy, then after that, they stop learning. The first thing that they do is just jump into the market, buy and sell. After one, two days of learning the system, because if you watch the process just like that, very likely you're not here because you love watching the markets, you're passionate about the financial markets. Very likely it's not that. Very likely you just want to become a millionaire overnight. You saw some advertisement on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, and you'll be like, oh my god, I just found the gold mine. So I need to buy and sell right now. But if you look at all the successful traders all around the world, all the successful hedge fund managers, they might be on the Forbes list. Every single day when they wake up, they still read, they still study the markets like they are a newbie in trading and investing. Now, if you want to become successful, that's what you need to do. Now, every single day, I still read books. Every single day, I still learn. Every single day, I still consult my mentor. Even though a lot of the things I might know already, because I believe that no matter how successful you are, there is always something to learn. If you stop learning today, the other trader who is more passionate about investing and trading, he or she is going to beat your ass. I don't want you to be the typical trader out there, be super super excited for the first 3 months, and then on the 4th month, 5th month, they be like, oh my god, this is so boring. Karen, how come you never told me? Now here's the thing, successful trading and investing is supposed to be boring. If you want excitement, go to Sentosa. There's this thing called the roller coaster. So the second lesson that I've learned from Paul Tudor Jones is every single day I assume that my position is wrong. Now one thing that I love about Paul is that he don't focus on acquiring the best system in the world. Of course he has a proven system, but his emphasis, his focus is always on risk control risk management. So if you have watched my previous videos, you know that I always emphasize that before you open a trade, you always need to think in terms of how much capital am I risking in this trade? How much percentage am I risking in this trade? Rather than how much money can I make in this trade? Because like I always said, when you take care of the risk, the reward will take care of itself. But if all you focus on is the reward, the profits, the money, the risk wouldn't take care of itself. Some of the best traders that I know, they are the best risk managers in the world. And if you've been following my story for quite some time now, you already know that in my first two to three years, I'm blowing a lot of accounts. So one thing that helped me change from blowing accounts to consistently profitable with many growing accounts is I focus more on risk management. Of course, with risk management, you also need to have a very strong trading psychology. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the discipline to practice your risk control. And when Paul opens a trade, he knows where his risk points are. So again, before you even open a trade, make sure you know exactly at the exact point where should you put your stop loss. Because when you start to set your stop loss, once you've opened a trade, you'll be setting a stop loss based on emotions rather than based on your trading plan. And you know that when you set your stop loss based on emotions, it's not going to turn out so well. And the third learning point, especially if you're a very successful trader, this would help you a lot. He says that don't ever feel that you're very good because the second you do that, you're dead. 
Now this is a mistake that a lot of traders make. They make a few lucky trades, especially beginner traders. Then they email me, Karen, I just made 50% in one day. I'm so happy. So they make a few winning streaks and then they become overconfident. They become egoistic. They feel that they are invincible. So then they over leverage. And then on the fifth, sixth trade where the trade did not go the way they want it to be, all of their past 20, 30 winning trades, I call this the tsunami effect. Just one wave wipe out everything because here's the thing when you start to over leverage you're operating with the mindset that i'm better than the markets the moment you disrespect mr market mr market is gonna kill you even i'm not invincible to the market even paul Tudor jones is not invincible to the market he doesn't win 100 percent of the time in fact sometimes he wins less than 50 percent of the time he still can make money at the end of the year if you understand the concept of risk to reward ratio, you know what I'm talking about. Even Warren Buffett is not invincible. There are trades that he makes, there are investments that he makes where he loses billions of dollars. But he's like, you know what, it's okay, it's just a bad investment that I've made because all my other investments can cover up this $1 billion loss. Now it's not about being the perfect trader, it's not about being the invincible trader. If you aim for that, you're just looking for the holy grail. You just try to become the best trader you can be, rather than being a perfect trader who doesn't make stupid or wrong trades. So speaking of losing trades, comes the fourth learning lesson. Trading is very competitive. You have to be able to handle getting your butt kicked. In other words, you need to learn how to handle losses. So I received a couple of emails from you asking me, Karen, how do you manage losing streaks? I have a very old video which I made one year ago. If you don't mind the cringiness, go back and watch it. 10% of profitable traders. When you're going through a losing streak, it is definitely very, very hard for a lot of people, including myself. But one of the ways to handle a losing streak is to take a break. Just get away from the charts. Go for a trading detox, meaning no charts for a couple of days. Or one week if you need more time. After that one break, when you come back to the markets, when you come back to the charts, when you go back to your trading desk, you feel a lot more refreshed. You feel ready to trade again. You feel ready to invest again. And Paul also talked about the fact that trading is very competitive. I study finance in university. The people in my class, they are so super competitive. Imagine studying from 6 a.m. all the way until 2 a.m. in the morning and then no holidays. When we graduate, we work all day long. Maybe we will take a break on Sunday. But most of the finance people that I know, they work their asses off. If you treat this like a hobby, there's no chance you are going to make it. If you're a lazy trader, go do something else. Because I receive emails from people every single week and be like, Karen, I'm going through this and this situation. Could you please send me some money? Don't become a trader because I can give you all the money you want, you would blow it all away, just like that. Because your mindset is wrong to begin with. Why is it that there are so many people all around the world, they win jackpots, million dollar jackpots, you check back with them again the second, third year, all that money is gone. And then you ask them, where did all the money went? They be like, gave it to people, I helped my brother to start a business. The hard part, the struggle for most people is that they can't keep the money they earn. So the fifth final lesson from Paul Tudor Jones is that he says that if I have a position going against me, I'll get out. If they are going for me, I'll keep them. So if that, let me know down in the comment section below. What are the other lessons that you have learned from Paul Tudor Jones? Otherwise, let me know what is your biggest takeaway from this video. So with that, I'm careful and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye.